this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, you guys. Brand new episode of the podcast. It's Music Monday. It's Music Monday, so I thought I would crack a beer. Um, we're going to have a little bit of this all-night IPA by Silver City Brewery. This is the can. And it's an IPA, but it's a light IPA. It's an all-night light IPA. 6.2% alcohol by volume. And... Um, Mm. Sounds so nice. Here we go. I'm pouring the beer. Yeah. So that's the beer. It's a, a light IPA. So if you're not a fan of IPAs, you still actually might like this. If you like... You like some taste to your beer. If you don't like your beer, just piss warm. Maybe piss cold. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you guys, welcome to it. Welcome, welcome. If you don't drink alcohol, hey, let's have an apple juice. Whatever it is you, what do you like to drink if you don't drink alcohol? I, I, I'll i tell you mine. You tell me yours. I'm going to go with water. Water's number one for me. Um, aside from water, hmm. I really enjoy I really enjoy carrot juice. I've talked about this with my breakfast burritos. Carrot juice is amazing. Just a little bit. You don't have to drink a, a volume of it, a high volume. You just drink a small little glass. You get that earthy taste to it. It's really nice. Um, I'm sure drinking too much of anything like that is probably not good for you after a while. But if you can get the most natural version of carrot juice, it's, it's great for you. Um, Aside from that, I don't know. Hmm. I don't drink caffeine, so I go I go with uh, caffeine-free Diet Coke. I don't recommend drinking soda of any kind, but every now and then you need something to mix your whiskey in or your vodka or whatever. So, yeah, I'll, I'll grab a, a caffeine-free Diet Coke. I'll grab uh, a Sprite, things like that. Yeah, man, I think I was talking. I I think I've talked about this before about how back in the day I was I, I would uh, drink a lot of Mountain Dew. That's how I got my my after high school, um, whatever they call that, right? The freshman, freshman 20 or 15, freshman 15, that's it. Anyway, it's Music Monday. It's Music Monday. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. All night IPA in stores anywhere around here, uh, Washington, Bremerton here, Washington State. It's in Idaho. It's in Oregon, um, for those in California, I apologize, but honestly, they, uh, Silver City was trying to get into California and the distro just didn't work out. I think it was, had something to do with, you know, around the pandemic times and just business changed and the way things were going changed. So they're not in California, maybe someday, but cheers to, to you all. You guys can, you know, pour something else, pour, pour a carrot juice for me. All right. Hmm. Love it. All right, Costco. I got I got that four pack at Costco. Actually, um, I was in there shopping and boom, ran across MXPX All Night IPA. Love it. MXPX.com, By the way, if you guys want to come check out some shows, we are playing July first at Festivois in Trey Rivière, uh, Quebec, <laughs> Three Rivers, Quebec. Uh, we're playing Saturday night. Going to be Epic show, headlining, come out and see us if you're anywhere in that area, Montreal, Quebec City, anywhere in Quebec, even if you're in Toronto, make the drive over. It's going to be amazing. We're going to camp out. We're going to do it. Um, and then uh, September, September 22, I think it is. I don't have my dates in front of me. September 22, I should probably find my dates. Um but uh, the thing is, is I, I thought I had them right here, and I don't. All right, that's fine. That's, that's cool. What are you going to do? Oh, oh, nope. Still haven't found them. I raced. Oh, that's what it was. Sorry, you guys. You don't see what I'm doing. I'm looking through my notes, but I erased the dates off of the note that I had them on. Anyway, it's September 22, Furnace Fest. 
Can't wait for it. This is going to be so epic. We're playing Friday night at Furnace Fest in Birmingham, Alabama. September. If you, if you go to any show this year, that show is going to be the one. I was talking to Thomas Nesky about it. He's like, man, I'm so looking forward to playing on stage at Furnace Fest. All those iconic photos you see. There's like these huge industrial furnaces behind you. I don't, I don't know what all this machinery is, but um, it's a very, very iconic festival. And um, I'm excited. So mxpx.com, you can find it. There's tickets available right now. Don't wait. Make your plans, get your hotels, all that. I don't even think we have our hotels, but we are working on it very, very soon. Um, I hope uh, we get our hotels before this comes out. <laughs> anyway, um, here we are. We, uh, we're doing this thing. We're in the middle of April, making it happen uh, right now. Uh, one more date, though. Two more dates, to, to be exact. October 21st and October 22nd. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right. It's in the state of Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada for uh, When We Were Young Fest. That's going to be fun, too. Going to be amazing, in fact. Um, but, like I said, if there was one show you're going to be at, be, come to our headliner at Furnace Fest, September 22nd, Birmingham, Alabama. If you're set down south, you're already set. If you're up north, it's not that hard. You should... I encourage you, you should visit the South now and again. This is a perfect opportunity. Uh, more on that later. Um, let's, get to, let's get to Music Monday. You know, that's why I cracked a beer. That's why we're doing this thing. And last, last week we didn't have anybody, so this week we might have two. Um, it just took, uh, took my, my guy a minute to get me the email. So, from, um, well, let's just start with it. This is an email. From Biscuit. Hi, Mike. Biscuit here from Trafficking Melodies out of Little, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. That's down south. It's not far from Birmingham. Uh, just wanted to drop our new song off to you. We're a melodic punk quartet focused on harmony vocals backed by hard-hitting riffs. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks, Biscuit. All right, Biscuit. I like it. I like it. Um, trafficking melodies. You guys can find this on any streaming sites. As far as I know, there's a couple singles. There's like, there's like three or four songs out for sure. Uh, I went and checked it out. So this one's kind of like, this one's similar to our beer all night. It's called up all night. Um, let's give it a listen. You guys, here we go. Trafficking melodies. cool um i'm digging it already it's got it's got definitely a descendants vibe which i really dig but it doesn't sound just like the descendants which is cool too um it's got some youth youth to it it's got some energy i love it i love it um yeah man it just hits you with those riffs like you said hard-hitting riffs right like that's what it's all about um Man, that's cool. Everybody check out Trafficking Melodies. Um, and you guys got a couple songs out. Dig it. Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, maybe you guys play live. Maybe you're about to start playing live. I don't know. But if you're around Little Rock, people can check it out. Maybe you guys travel around the south there. The dirty south. Um, man, I've always... We have so many stories. Like, you know, I'm just thinking of Louis... Uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, um, 
Mississippi, you know, we've driven through. We really haven't played Mississippi. You know, Jackson, Mississippi, that'd be, that'd probably be the place. But, um, yeah, that that's like one of the states that kind of got away from us. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure we've played there, to be honest, but we just not, not very often, not very often. I think we've played all 50 states. Wild. All 50 states, including Puerto Rico. We haven't played a, we didn't play a, a show, but we did film a movie there and played a, a fake show at a club. Um, I don't know if you can count that. You can't really count that. But we have played in Alaska. We've played in Hawaii. Those are legit states. Puerto Rico is more of a territory. Um, in Guam, also a territory. We haven't played there. Am I missing something? I think I think that's everything. Um, all right. I love it. I think you guys are great. Sounds awesome. Thanks for sending in your song. Music Monday. Off to a great start already. Thank you, guys. Mm. Let's get to, um, let's get to the next the next song. So, Joshua Ryan Henderson. He's probably not used to hearing his name full like that, but it's on Facebook like that. He wrote onto the My Career Podcast group page. If you guys aren't already a member on on Facebook, the podcast Facebook group is actually starting to it's starting to come up a bit. You know, people are 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 putting more questions on there. I'm grabbing stuff from there and talking about it on the podcast. People are commenting on some of the stuff from the podcast and making their own posts. Exactly what happens when you pay a little bit of attention and when you have a little less spam. You know what I'm saying, if you've been around. So uh, I love it. Thank you, guys. Uh, if you're not already on there, it's private. So you got to ask to join. So you can't come on here and just spam us with all your, your uh, Justin Bieber and you know, Simon Cowell news, whatever, right? All right, so uh, here's Josh from uh, the Facebook group. He says, I've called into the podcast a bunch, but haven't been a part of this group until recently. Welcome, Josh. Uh, great to see a community built around the podcast. I agree with you. Um, here's my band, Gross. Gross with an exclamation. A four-piece a four skate punk band from central Nebraska. Check us out if you have time. Our album, Pity Party, is streaming everywhere as well. And then he uh, put a link, which, you know, if you're a podcast listener and you call into the podcast, I don't mind if you put links. I don't mind if you share your music with me and with our audience. You know, that's kind of what this community is for. Um, uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot about what it is I want to do with the podcast and you know, I could keep, you know, and I'm going to keep having guests on now and again. It's, it's definitely become less often due to just scheduling things and how busy I've been. Um, and, I, and, and I love doing the voicemails. I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to keep doing all these things. But but adding a community aspect into it a lot harder is is something that I'm really interested in trying out. So that's why I'm trying these Music Mondays, if you haven't. Uh, I've only done one so far, so you probably haven't noticed, but, um, it's all about just giving back to you guys, you know, and trying to get, get some of your, your art out there, your music out there, whatever it is you do. Um, you know, and, and people, you know, these bands, man, you guys are putting out some cool stuff. I really dig it. So why not? Why not try something different? So let me know, let me know if you like this, but if you don't like it, you're not going to say anything anyway. You guys are too respectful. You're too nice. You're too great. So thank you guys for listening to the podcast, and thanks for being part of this. Mm. Let's get to it. Here's Gross and the song. Well, I'm going to choose the song because it's an album. The, the, the album's called Pity Party, but the there's a bunch of songs. There's eight songs, and it came out uh, a little bit last year. But check this out. I was immediately drawn to the song Let's Skate featuring Colin Cutthroat. Must be somebody they know in a band, but um, let's listen to it. Here we go. Love it. Love it. Got four wheels on the ground, 
Oh, Ska? All right, I love it, man. That's great. All right, so so that that's cool. Um, Gross. The the band is called Gross. They have a band camp. It's on the podcast group site. You can check it out. Um, again, I love this too. You know, it's got it's got an Op Ivy vibe. Um, which I love absolutely, man. You know, I don't know how long you guys been doing this, but uh, it sounds like a couple of you guys can play some songs, play some, play your instruments. You know, uh, obviously you can play some songs. Uh, dig it, dig it, dude. And looking at your band camp, everybody has a beard. Every single one of you has a beard. Is that part of the the prerequisite for being in the band? <laughs> Must have beard. I could just see it, you know, like tryouts like dude that guy was ripping but no beard <laughs> all right you guys this has been this has been good this has been a good music monday so to recap we had uh trafficking melodies with uh up all night and uh and then this gross and the song's called well the song's called skate let's skate but uh the the, the whole album's called um shoot i already <laughs> where did i put that the whole album's called Pity Party. All right, cool. Let's get to some voicemails. Let's go. Hey, Mike. This is DJ from Cincinnati. Uh, actually, going to be moving up to the Fort Wayne area. So songs like uh, Move to Bremerton and Southbound have been getting a lot of rotate over here in my headquarters. Um. I'm really excited for Furnace Fest uh, to see you guys. This will be the second time I get to see you guys. But I'm also really excited for the 90 Pound Woods and the Goaty Hook reunion, and I think the Insiders are also reuniting too. Um, my question is, um, with those reunions and with the fact that Slick Shoes and Craig's brother have also become active again, could you ever see you guys all doing a big tour together, like a big, almost like a, a tooth and nail uh, reunion kind of tour. I mean, I don't know the logistics that go into that, but I think it'd be a cool idea. Um, hope everything's going well. Peace. Peace. What's up, DJ? Great. Dude, how did you know? Well, I guess we, we did announce Furnace Fest, but yeah, Furnace Fest. Furnace Fest is going to be so dope. And the fact that you mentioned 90 Pound Wuss, one of my favorite bands ever. I love 90 Pound Wuss. Um, they're one of the bands that, like, I've just always felt comfortable with. Jeff, you might know him as Jeff Suffering, the singer. The face behind 90 Pound Wuss, right? Like, he... He's like a brother to me. Like, I haven't hung out with him in, in, in years. Actually, actually, we just hung out with him when we released our beer. He came out to the pre-beer party at the Kraken game, before the Kraken game, because it was in Seattle. And it was at Queen Anne Beer Hall. And, and we got to hang out with him that day. And, and before that, it was, it was a few years before he came out and to the studio and did the podcast. But um, did he do the podcast? He came out to the studio. I don't know if he did the podcast, actually. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, he should. He should. And he will. We're going to have him on, for sure. Um, there's there's a lot going on, you guys. There's a lot. But but 90 Pound Wuss is seriously a band that I wouldn't be half as excited about playing Furnace Fest if not for 90 Pound Wuss playing Furnace Fest the same day we are. So... 90 Pound Woods used to tour with us all the time. They were sort of our default band because when we were just getting started, before, really kind of before Tooth and Nail even, we knew them and we we played shows with them over in Port Angeles. They would do shows. They would, uh, they would put on their own shows and, and bring us over. So, excuse me. Um, so they were just kind of like our punk rock brother band, right? Like, And we would tour with them everywhere and we've had so many experiences um marty their drummer 
pooped in our hubcap. Yep, true story. That was, um, I don't know what, what tour that was. Probably the Small Town Minds tour or something like that. Um, yeah, I, you know, I love those guys. I love all those guys. John, John Hemmelberger. He's uh, a big dude, big beard now. Like, it's crazy. Like, just like these used to be just young guys, just like us, you know. But they, I think they were a little older than us, t slightly. But um, s still, still our peers, absolutely. And I am so excited about 90 Pound Woods. They, they got some, like, old school songs, kind of like we have, like, Poconatcha songs, like really punk songs. And then they have, like, a post-punk kind of vibe, too, um, with their later stuff. And I really dig all of it, really. You know, um, if you like, you know, it's just, it's it's a bygone era. You're not going to hear bands like that anymore. So to your question about, like, are we going to get together and do, you know, a tour? I don't know. Never say never. I'm not going to say no. But the odds of that all happening, I would love to do a show. Yeah, absolutely. Like, MX, I mean, if you, if you really want to think about it, MXPX headlining Furnace Fest Friday night with all those bands, Amberlynn, Reliant K, um, Hatebreed, a little bit of an outlier there, but love that they're on there and they're, headline, they're kind of a, a sub main support. Um, but below all that during the day is 90 Pound Wuss and a ton of bands that you guys know. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, Craig's Brother and Slick Shoes. And um, now that's going to be an epic show for the scene for the tooth and nail scene for the old school tooth and nailers that's the show you don't want to miss that weekend this year at furnace fest is i mean reliant k's back uh amber lynn broke up a couple years ago i was i was playing solo acoustic on that tour do you guys remember me talking about this the tour where we got snowed in and uh, you know i bought an element a honda element because of that tour so yeah um yeah the 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 amount of bands on that show at Furnace Fest this year is amazing. So um, I'm blown away. Will we do a tour? Probably not. But if we did, it would be awesome. Definitely would love to have 90 Pound Wuss, Goaty Hook, Slick Shoes, Craig's Brother. We never really played a lot with Craig's Brother back in the day um, or, or even recently. But I really, you know, I think we played with them at least a couple times for sure. But it was so early on that it didn't cement in my memory playing shows with them. But um, good guys would love to would love to see them, you know, love to see when they're doing well and would love to see them on some shows with us. Um, I mean, there's there's what about like what about a uh, value pack? You know, like I don't think they're a band anymore, but but um, Goaty Hook, we've toured with them on the East Coast all the time back in the early, early days. I think our very first tour, 1995, we toured. Uh, it was us and Blenderhead. I've talked about this. And it was Blenderhead's tour, but we were kind of like bigger than them by the time the tour started. So it was kind of co-headlining. And, um, and Goaty Hook, you know, we, we, we got to meet them and play with them on like three or four shows, I think. Uh, in Virginia and that area. And I think the very last show of the tour they played at the Fire Escape uh, in Virginia Beach. The Fire Escape, Virginia Beach, that sounds about right. I don't know if that's the right city to the venue, but um, that first tour in 1995, we, we ended in Virginia Beach and we got a hotel on the beach. We had never gotten a hotel on the beach that whole tour. I mean, of course... <laughs> the whole tour but but we got like we like splurged and we all like pooled our money together to get a nice room on the beach and it was straight up i mean we got to like run out run out at night and jump into the ocean it was awesome but then the next day we started our trip home not our, our trip home our trip back west to um not Laguna Beach, but it was Newport Beach. Newport Beach, we had a festival we were playing on the beach. So we went from Virginia Beach east all the way west across the country to Newport Beach. So that was when I wrote the song Sorry So Sorry uh, off of Life in General. That was when I was kind of cementing all the songs. Like I had written a bunch of songs and I and I had written and I wrote Sorry So Sorry after we had a fight on that trip back. Uh, Matt was riding with us, Matt from uh, the drummer of Blenderhead, Matt Johnson. 
Um, also a drummer of Don't Know and Roadside Monument, I think. Um, but anyway, that was that trip. And I wrote a bunch of songs. After that festival in Newport Beach, we probably had a couple other shows. And then finally we made our way home and we got back to to Bremerton, Washington, but we traveled literally playing no other shows in between from Virginia Beach, Virginia to Newport Beach, California. And it was ridiculously dumb. We should have had, you know, we should have like had some shows on the way, but I digress. <laughs> but when I got home from that tour, uh, I wrote the rest of the record for Life in General and that, that changed everything really because uh, touring changed everything, seeing the country having all these experiences, meeting all these new people. It was amazing. So Goatee Hook was definitely part of that. Um, so you're not wrong in wanting a tour, you know, another Tooth and Nail era, early tour like that. But I think what we're going to have to settle for is most likely, like I say, never say never, most likely we're going to have to settle for, for some shows like Furnace Fest right here before your eyes. When are you going to see a, a lineup like this? You're not. So... That's it. We, you know, we don't play a lot of festivals. We're playing a lot of festivals now to like knock some out, but we're going to go back to headlining shows and just doing, doing our club shows, doing our theaters, doing, doing that kind of thing. And it's going to be great, but um, don't miss it. Every era is, is precious. I feel like not precious. No era is precious. It's more like every era is worth experiencing. And, that's that that's my point i'm gonna leave it at that um dj i hope you uh enjoy your new your new digs where you're moving um i can't remember where you said you were moving from you're moving from cincinnati but i can't remember where you said you were hold on let's ch let's check it hey mike this is dj from cincinnati uh actually gonna be moving up to the fort wayne area fort wayne indiana that's right okay okay purdue area um it's not that different, honestly. I mean, it's 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 going to be a little more, a lot more cows, a lot more fields. But aside from that, it's you know, you're going to be all right. I, I wish you the best, um, dude. Great, great little, uh, great little voicemail. Here we go. Let's go to the next. You guys hear that? That's the cops. Those sirens. Jeez. Here we go. Hey, Mike. This is Bill from Brockport calling in again. Couple quick questions. First of which revolving around your gear. I was wondering if there was ever talks about making a Sterling version of your Stingray bass for more the middle class with kids group that can't quite swing the professional grade basses and guitars and whatnot so we can still get in on all the fun and still help out the Ernie Ball brand and support yourself as well. Um, another question was revolving around the PX comic strip that I had gotten in my blind box through the MXPX website. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really cool. I posted about it in the MXPX group and my career podcast group. It got really good um, attention, and I was just curious if there were more of them, how many there were, what sparked that, and just kind of the whole story behind the comic strips. I thought that was really cool. I never knew that was a thing. And that was all for today. Thanks, Mike. As always, have a good one. Can't wait to hear the new music. And keep on keeping on, man. Right on. Thanks, Bill. Yes, gear. Let's just go into it. Um, you're asking about a Sterling version of, the, of like one of my signature bases, and I literally um, had a conversation with Ernie Ball this month about that. And so I think... I think eventually we're going to work out something like that. I, it's not a done deal or anything like that, but it's it's the idea is been float has been floated and is there and um now I just got to figure out what what color to do. You know, what what's my next color? You know, because I'll probably do more unlimited, not unlimited. I'll do some limited versions, but honestly, uh I I my main thing is to try to do something like what you just described. So fingers crossed. Don't hold your breath, but fingers crossed. And thank you for the good vibes. Keep sending those good vibes because it makes things happen. You must be reading my mind. I'm over here like 
making plans within plans and you guys are like oh yeah yeah just guessing all my plans all right uh the the px comic strip though um i don't know how much i could really add to this but this was a comic strip that i don't remember i know my mom was involved somehow my mom michelle that runs uh the merch arsenal mxpeaks.com um maybe chris barch had something to do with this but a fan of ours contacted us wanted to do this and and we're just kind of like yeah this sounds kind of fun let's try it you know it was uh but it never really it wasn't during a time when mxpx was really hitting on all cylinders it was before tom and yuri came back to the fold and um and and we're full-time and and you know I don't think it really even needs MXPX fans to be successful because the character itself can just become a character that kids might like. I mean, that's the beauty of the Pokemon Night Punk, the branding of it. It's great. But, but of course, it was on a dying medium. It was part of a, a newspaper, a funny page kind of thing. I can't remember the, the exact name of it. Uh, but, but it was... Um, it was quickly like with it was there for a year it came out quarterly or something like that so there was a bunch of of strips that came out but then after a year they lost their funding or whatever the main company was got sold to another company and that all stopped but the 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 idea of the the comic strip itself is something that i don't think has really even been tapped into you know it was a it was a thing that that was an idea we've had for a long time, really, and we just don't have the time to do it. So when somebody came with their ideas and their willingness to work on it themselves, we were like, cool, let's do this. And they would just send us the ideas and we'd be like, that's cool, that's cool. And then they would really do the rest. We gave them a lot of autonomy. Um, I, I feel terrible. I don't even know the name of the, the guy that did the comic, but uh, maybe I could amend this. Maybe I could find it, actually. Maybe I can go and look at look at my uh facebook here and find it because it might be here um talking about because you wrote in you're talking about you you why is come on okay um it's so slow i don't know why I do know why. Because I'm on the wrong... <laughs> I just realized I'm on the wrong network, Wi-Fi network. One that's like way over there instead of the one that's literally right here. Because I had my computer over there doing work earlier. That's, you know, it's hard to to be your own boss. It's hard to be your own boss. You know, people telling you, hey, are you on the right network? Until it's too late. But, um, yeah. That's it. I can't find it because this thing's going crazy. So never mind. Let's just get rid of it. It's not even that important. Let's let's just move on, you guys. Boom. <laughs> and welcome to the podcast. Uh, very professional around here. All right, here we go. Next one. Hey, this is Gregory, the punkest daddy of them all, host of the Punkest Thing podcast. So uh, would love a shout out for people to come and check out the punkest thing podcast and um it's life changing. Thanks a lot. Make it a great day. Excellent. Thanks for calling in. The punkest thing podcast hosted by Gregory, I assume. Um but even if it's not life changing. That's that's the word. I have not checked it out. I can't vouch for Gregory, but he called in. Why not? I'm not uh, Yeah, let's do it. There's room for all. Let's raise all boats. Let's do it. All right. Let's get to the next one. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Mike. Uh, so I was listening to um, uh, what's the album? Uh, Warning by a Green Day. And uh, as I listened to a track called Church on Sunday, I was like, oh, this is a cool chord progression. Uh, it kind of reminded me of first day of the rest of our lives uh, chord progression I hadn't like heard this uh, album in a while 
And like the first lyric is coincidentally, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Um, coincidence, quite possibly. Maybe there's a story behind that. And further, I listen to the next song called Fashion. And that one starts off like, down kind of like, um, uh, well adjusted. Is there any correlation of inspiration between these? Uh, or am I just going down a rabbit hole of conspiracies and <laughs> I'm, I'm too, uh, you know, looking, looking in too deep? But, uh, I just thought it was an interesting coincidence. Uh, if anything, um, yeah, stoked for the new record. Talk soon. Heck yeah. You know, no, I didn't act, I didn't try to rip off Green Day. Um, but let's check it out. Let's see. I know this is going to get flagged on uh, on YouTube. So if you're watching, but whatever, doesn't matter really. Let's check it out. So 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 dun, dun, dun. so first day of the rest of our lives on before everything and after starts out with a guitar that just goes dun, 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 and then the band comes comes in. Don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. Where's life taking me? Don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. So that's how, that's how, okay. So let's see. I don't, I know the song Church on Sunday, but I haven't listened to it in a long time. So let's see if it hits. Okay, the progression's the same, meaning one, four, five, but, so. Don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. Okay, okay. Today's the first day of the rest of our life. Yeah, I did not do that on purpose. Um, wow, that is very coincidental, lyrically. First day of the rest of our lives, I miss you already. Um, but I think what you're hearing is just the fact that it's the progression. It's it's like what we call that is like a one four five Ramones core, like hey ho, let's go, hey ho. Let's, I know that's not how it goes, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like that progression happens in thousands and thousands of songs. And it happens in both of these songs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there is a, there is some, a little bit of, a little bit of familiarity, but no, I didn't, I didn't rip it off on purpose. In fact, I don't think they ripped MXPX off on purpose when, when I've heard some songs they've come out with. Since, uh, you know, but anyway, let's check out the next one, Well Adjusted. But this this is the Green Day. So Well Adjusted, I think he said Well Adjusted. The next song kind of sounds like that. Like, now I remember I wrote this on Warp Tour. Um, the same year Green Day was on the tour, I think it was, maybe, no, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a year later. It was, two, it was, it was 2005. So no, 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 they were on 2000. This is five years later. No, uh, no, 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 no. I'm totally wrong about that. Completely wrong. This was, this was probably, uh, I might have been writing this the year in 2000. Because if this album, Before Everything and After, came out in 2001 or two or something like that, three. Yeah, it sounds about right. So let's check it. So, so Well Adjusted goes. I remember writing that song showing the the song to Natalie from the Halo Friendlies. She was on that she her her and her whole band sang backup vocals on before and everything and after. Uh before everything and after on a few songs she sang backup vocals. Did some harmonies, did some gangs. So that had to be that was well adjusted. So I was I was showing her the song on Warp Tour. So they were on Warp Tour, which or they were going to the Warp Tour and hanging out. I don't know which one. But this may have been heavily influenced by Green Day, but the song "Well Adjusted" sounds nothing to me like Green Day. But let's let's find out. So this next song on the Warning album by Green Day is called "Fashion Victim." It's number four. This should be technically like one of the best songs on the record. So let's check it. 
Oh. Okay, well, it doesn't... No, I, I don't even remember. No, I remember this song, but yeah, no, that hasn't... No. Um, zero chance that influenced that song, now that I'm hearing that. Um, because I just remember when I wrote well adjusted i did it so many different ways i did it so i i did like the, the chord progressions and the the way i was playing the chords and the the bounciness was not that like i i, I tried so many different things until like i came upon that and i was like yeah i kind of like this you know and just like and just stuck with it so it was just it was a battle an internal battle of what do i do what do i do oh let's try this let's try this and and you know, I've talked about this a lot. Song, I've talked about songwriting tons. You know, this is a songwriting podcast. This is a creative podcast. But I've talked about this in the past where I don't really, I, I don't really listen to other music when I'm writing. I don't. I don't want other songs to infiltrate my riffs. I don't want beats, and I don't want. Dun, 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 dun. So if I come up with that, it's a subconscious thing. It's like a, a. It's underneath the subfloor of my, my creative juices you know and, and so i'm grabbing things that i think are just coming to me not when i'm just listening to something and go okay let's try that let's rip that off and like no uh if i do come up with something that's influenced by well influenced by green day of course like i've been a fan of green day since before mx speaks was a band really um but geez i mean i'm sure things come up i mean i hear I hear Green Day's dun, 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 Hitching a Ride song. That's a Stray Cat song. It's the first time I heard it was a Stray Cat song. Um, the Offspring, um, Ubli, you know, there's a, there's a Beatles song they ripped off, you know, Get a Job by The Offspring is a Beatles song called Ubla, Ubla Day, Ubla Da, Life Goes On. And it's like, okay, I guess that's cool. Like, just rip off the whole hook of the song and then, like make your own words to it like that's what bob dylan used to do because that was the way that used to be done so i mean it's not like it's never been done before that's the way it was done all the time and then i think it's a newer thing to come up with your own original ideas so that's what i've been trying to do and i feel like no matter how many times i write that the 145 I can still come up with some some songs that don't sound like that. Like, like even if you put that Green Day song next to First Day of the Rest of Our Lives, even with him saying First Day of the Rest of Our Lives, they sound completely different. The, the two songs. There's similarities, sure, but they sound different. Maybe if you're like somebody's mom and you don't listen to punk rock, they sound exactly the same. But... I guess that's the age old, that's the age old problem. <laughs> hey, life is good. Life is good. The, uh, more soon, more soon. There's, there's a lot going on. If you guys want to call in, please do. The number is 360-830-6660. Be part of the podcast. I'm going to have um, a member of the podcast group come on this podcast because he was recently on a TV show called Naked and Afraid. And I would have to pull up his information. I won't put you through that torture. But I was just like, hey, come on the podcast. It'd be great. Or if you want to come on the podcast, I'll have you. That kind of thing. Because I would love to hear his experience with being on Naked and Afraid and what it's like to starve, find, try to find food, try to uh, interact with total strangers, um, interact with the camera crew, all of that. Uh, uh, so if you guys have questions about Naked and Afraid, the podcast group, the private podcast group, is probably the best place to ask those questions. All right. Um, but we'll, we'll get that coming up um, soonish, I guess. All right. All right. Peace. Thank you guys so much. Before we go, well, shout out to Bob McKnight. The Bob and Katie Show is his podcast, but he uh, does a lot around here. He's been uh, cleaning up the podcast Facebook group. He's been reminding me that we need uh, intros and things like that for the podcast. You know, he keeps me on point. So shout out to Bob McKnight. Appreciate it, buddy. And uh, thanks for uh, helping out with uh, all that you do. 
All right, mxpeaks.com, thanks for your orders. We are rocking and rolling. Yes, I'm wearing a jacket. It's cold outside, but things are slowly but surely heating up. I appreciate you. Peace.